Coming up on this episode of The Village Idiom. You should have little rabbits tattooed all over yourself. All right. So from a distance, they would look like hairs. <laughs> dum, dum, da, da, village Idiom. Hello and welcome to The Village Idiom. We are a podcast that every week chooses a popular saying to take a shallow but hopefully comedic and once in a while even interesting dive into its meaning, its usage, its origins, but we're also going to use it to hang our otherwise directionless, directionless, really directionless conversation on. My name is Jurassic Mark. Which, how many directions? Directionless. Just, that the, is the, that even a word? The we say that every opposite, week. Directionless. Opposite of one direction. Is this real life? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's a little, the room is changing, right? The room, the studio. The studio the has studio a little bit of is, a bounce in it we these days. Maybe have one or two more. No, we've got. We've been preparing for you guys. A new location. New location. We are stepping up. Thanks to your support at Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> we All got your... some of that. Some of that sweet Hello Fresh money rolling in. <laughs> so that's really helping out uh, for our new studio. Basically, it's the HelloFresh warehouse. HelloFresh, where your dinner is solved. Is that what their thing is? I'm looking at a HelloFresh box over there. Oh, your dinner is solved. Dinner solved. Oh, my goodness. That's a that's a that's at least a $50,000 idea. Yeah? Dinner your, solved? Your dinner is solved. It's a good one. It is. It's not dinner is served. No, your dinner is solved. Your dinner is solved. Yeah, because it's like, it is. It's a puzzle trying to figure out what are we having for dinner tonight? It's a fantastic, it's like an exit room. <laughs> that just shows if up. You want to get out of this kitchen. This exit. Follow room these. Just shows up three or four times. Twenty five minutes of instructions. Twenty five minutes of instructions. Three or four times a week. Hello, fresh here to serve you. Dinner solved. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Hello Fresh, and to all our supporters. We are changing studios. Truth is, uh, you and I are no longer going to be coworkers. No, no. Do you want to tell them about? Uh, you want to get into that? And save it for a few weeks to. Show your new your new situation. Yeah, the new studio. It'll all make sense. Yeah, it'll all come together for you. So we'll uh, we'll just tease you with that, and then uh, yeah, make sure you tune in, check it out on uh, YouTube every once in a while to see uh, what's happening with the new digs. The new digs is coming right up. It's very exciting but for today. How about this? Don't lose your head. That's enough. <laughs> no, it's not. Don't lose your head. <laughs> Just a little bit more. It's Don't very, lose your head. It's very Freddie Mercury. That was Freddie Mercury. That was clean. Such a dis- Absolutely. Such a distinct voice. Yeah. Don't lose your head is today's idiom. Oh, um, man. Speaking of don't lose your, your head, I'm in a perpetual state of baldingness. Um, of what? Of baldingness. Oh, baldingness. And you shave yours to maintain this cue ball effect. I shave mine to hide the... Because you're like crazy blonde. I am. That's why on YouTube, if you're just listening... If you've ever wondered if there's any reason why I should go watch on YouTube, is to show that I have no eyebrows. It my <laughs> eyebrows are so blonde that on camera, on film, every school I just thought you had LAP school show picture. Or nope. I've got blonde eyebrows, but they don't show up. Still don't have eyebrows. They don't show up on film. So go to YouTube. Or site. Where you can wonder to yourself silently, is he a burn victim? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So that's good. You've got a nicely shaped head. So tell me about your baldingness. Oh. So yeah, I, I lose- so you said I've been shaving. I've been shaving mine since I was 21 years old, mm-hmm. but for sure have uh, thinned out. Like it's for sure. Uh, I just didn't see the process. So losing your... Judging by all men in my family, both yeah. my mother's side and my father's side, I was going to be bald no it's matter what. A genetic, a genetic certainty that this was going to occur. This was going to happen. I just chose not to have the cul-de-sac and got rid of it at 21 years old. Very I've nice. been I've been bald. <laughs> That's funny phrase. I chose to not have the cul-de-sac. <laughs> I've been bald longer uh, than I have not been. Wow, is that right? including birth and stuff? Yeah. So, no, so. no, no. I don't know. Assuming I was born with a full head of hair, hmm. I've been bald, like shaving my head, longer than I have not been. Hmm. Sorry. I thought so, <laughs> I was like, is something on fire? But I guess so. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Well, it's it, it's just little trivia pieces. So you talk about losing your head, losing your losing your hair losing things you feel like you're losing your head because you're losing your hair oh, my forehead perpetually creeps back like a cul-de-sac apparently i don't know <laughs> it will be when you have just the ring oh it's just the fr- like this little part, the bald part is the cul-de-sac i'll be an actual fryer <laughs> you keep the front yeah <laughs> little little fringe the fr- fringe situation little surrey with a fringe on top yeah what uh fryer needs a belly tuck like <laughs> i don't notice it like i suppose if you pulled out pictures i'd go oh yeah but I don't notice that it's receding. 
You do? Like, can no, you like actually see it going? No, like the Bay of Fundy reseeding, <laughs> so, but not coming back. <laughs> ah, Canadian humor. <laughs> so, so, we no, put, just losing, we put the losing. fun in Fundy. <laughs> Thunderwear. No, just things that are, uh, I was trying to think of things that you, you know, lose. And so it's like, uh, you know, you just stop caring. You lose your keys. Are you a keys loser? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, uh, so very early on, you have to know yourself, right? Sure. And I just find that one of those early things that I got triggered off on was like many dudes. I, I'm, I lose my phone wallet keys. And so I got into this uh, habit, this pattern of no matter where I go, if I go over to your house, you say it out loud, phone wallet keys. No, I'll leave them together and I'll leave them usually on top of like your fridge. Okay. And so I've picked an obscure spot that's in everyone's home or many people's home that is not likely to be, I would just go to the top of the fridge. Right. Okay. Yeah. Top of a fireplace. Those are the first places I would look if I was like, oh, I can't find, I'm just probably put them on the top of your fridge. So I'm, I'm phone wallet keys. I'm a habit when it comes to phone wallet keys i'm habit so it's always in the same place rare if i if i lose them it's because i broke my habit that yes, one time that's it but no, I, I, know thyself. I used to tell people you know when i leave my office when i leave home when i leave wherever i'm always like phone wallet keys phone wallet keys i say it like that like it's a big tip or trick that everyone should use and then i don't know if you ever saw the adam sandler Phone wallet keys. Yeah. Phone and I'm like, keys. that's me. That's me. And then I'm like, that's everyone. Phone wallet, oh. laptop, phone wallet laptop passport keys <laughs> by the end. Yeah. So uh, you lose. So, so common things you lose. You lose your hair. You lose your keys. You lose. Have you ever lost your car? I've had my car stolen by friends. Have you ever count? thought you've lost your car? Yeah. Say recently. Yes. <laughs> yes. Five. See, but that's the same thing. You friends. just parked somewhere different. Right, yeah, yeah, that's you parked out on the street instead of in your usual. It's not like like CEO like, spot, like lose lose. Like, no, I don't think it. Yeah, jinx. Jinx, <laughs> <laughs> jinx again. Yeah. Well, I was, so I want this phrase "lose your head" really took me to. I thought it would be a fun little trivia piece for everybody. And so, uh, before we get uh, too far into the rest of the episode, um, "lose your head" often will pop up inside of movies where like the villain like it could be uh you know the three musketeers and it'd be like you know the the evil prince what's his name and the three musketeers prince prince uh, bad guy no you know he's the or the sheriff of nottingham or okay. whatever this sort of thing where it's like hey, oh, what happened to so-and-so oh he lost his head right yeah, he must have lost his head or some stupid, <laughs> <laughs> meaning that he had his he- his head chopped off in, right. s- in some way. Right. And so, which immediately took me to Arnold Schwarzenegger and terrible movie lines from Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay. So, because, uh, uh, of course, there was, uh, you know... Uh, uh, terrible things that happened in, in Arnold movies. He's always got a, an awful line um, that goes along with it, like, he lost his head, this sort of thing. So I'm going to tell you the scenario, and then you're going to tell me the terrible... Am I going to say the line, or are you going to say the line and I say the movie? What's, what's no, the no, game? no. I'm going to say the movie and the surroundings, and you're oh, going to tell man. me. You can you can play this from home. Okay. So we got... If you'd it, like to purchase the home version. You got the movie the terrible. Arnold Schwarzenegger in Commando. Okay. All of our illegitimate children out there following along. The Commando. He has someone in his outstretched arm hanging over a cliff and he and then what happens what's the line for his death you are good to the last drop <laughs> yours is better because <laughs> it was i had to let him go oh oh i didn't know he actually did let go i had to let him go yeah and so yeah <laughs> good to the last <laughs> drop <laughs> that's it that's even better okay give me another you should one. Be, you should be right okay i don't even do you remember the movie the running man of course okay yeah yeah, yeah. so for all of you uh you know they're people, redoing it with him, oh, really? No, I can't remember. They're redoing it though, because oh, it was it was great. It was this terrible kind of great. Okay, there was a character called Buzzsaw. Of course, there was. So uh, he, uh, Arnold killed Buzzsaw with his own chainsaw, and then to which he said he had to. What happened? What happened to I Buzzsaw? I came. I conquered. I saw. <laughs> he had to split. Oh. So are you following along what's going on yeah, here? Yeah, I'm trying. Okay. I'm okay, trying. Okay, okay, okay. I went with he came, he saw, he conquered. But Same with the, in the running man. 
uh, he blows up a guy named Fire uh, Fireball with his own flamethrower tank. So the, the the packet of fuel in the back. Arnold blows him up and says, "What a burn! <laughs> what a burn! <laughs> Sick, Sick burn!" burn. <laughs> What a hothead. Oh, terrible, right? <laughs> okay. Same movie with Sub-Zero. I'm glad I'm at least coming up with something. Yours are <laughs> as good as the original. So uh, the Sub-Zero, who he strangled with uh, barbed wire. Sub-Zero. That's a movie? No, remember Sub-Zero? Oh, Batman. No. It was in, during the Running Man, but there was one of the people that he was fighting who was a hockey goalie. Oh, we're still in Running Man. We're I still you were in Running Man. Okay, got it, got it, got it. He was a hockey goalie with like razor blades yeah, for yeah, okay. like hockey sticks. Sub Zero. Sub Zero. Uh, so who he strangled with barbed wire. Mm. Strangled with barbed wire. Uh, yeah, I don't know. What a what a pain. That's it. What a pain in the neck. Oh, I should have got that. I, I, they're so predictable that it's going to make you angry. I'm disappointed. Oh, okay, I got... Um, uh, let's do it. Yeah, I'll, I'll do two more, two more, two more. Because they're, they're pretty quick and, and painless here. Except for... Except for pain in the neck. Except for Bennett. So he was fighting against Bennett again in commando and throws a pipe at him. The pipe goes through him into a hot water container. To which he says to Bennett, "Now you're in. Now you're in hot water. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. <laughs> Let off some steam. Oh, see, <laughs> you're so better. I'm telling you, you should rate for rate for Hollywood. Okay, uh, movie Predator, final one. Playing at home with us, seeing if, if you can remember this. Movie Predator. He, uh, um, a man is pinned." To a tree with a knife. That's the whole thing. Yep. Uh, to which he says, "Pinned to a tree with a knife." So and he and he's and he's elevated and, and hanging there. Okay. Arnold says, "Are you stumped?" <laughs> <laughs> he says, "Stick around." Oh, so good. Yours are better. <laughs> oh. So lovely. So lose your head is in this genre of movie things where it, uh, it, get, it gets played out pretty bad. Okay, so you went to to that. That's where Queen of Hearts. This, this ha- okay. So I'm going to come back to the Queen of Hearts in Alice in Wonderland. Mm. Um, but I got rabbit trailed down uh, Ichabod Crane, Sleepy Hollow, Headless Horseman, and that's a good one. And I'm I'm going to derail a little bit on the origins on what we're not talking about today, right? Because Washington Irving wrote uh, at least the American version of Sleepy Hollow, Headless Horseman, and there's all sorts of much older folklore that have headless horsemen mm-hmm. and and you the Hessian sp- horsemen. You could spend an hour mm-hmm. talking about all that, but here's something interesting: Washington Irving is buried in a cemetery in New York. Um, called Sleepy Hollow Cemetery. I've been to Sleepy Hollow. Have you? New York. Oh, like yes. that cemetery? I've been to it. Did you see his tombstone? No. The author of Sleepy Hollow Had is Had I known it was there, I'd have gone look. There. So I've been to Sleepy Hollow, New York, and looked around, and they play it So in Sleepy the same Hollow way. Cemetery is not in Sleepy Hollow, New York, though. It's in oh. Terrytown. So I don't know about that part, but I've been to Sleepy Hollow, and they play it the same way as like Punk Satani plays up Groundhog Day. Like this is their thing. Okay, Sleepy Hollow. There's I mean, headless horsemen maybe, stuff everywhere. Is it like falsely named Sleepy Hollow? Then I don't know. What term it? Like, anyway, so so the the gist of the, the story of the cemetery is it's it's next to this old Dutch church in Terrytown, mm. New York, and um, and for a brief time. Washington Irving was a trustee of the cemetery and very, you know, he's an author, he's a writer, so is, speaks well with his words. Out of his mouth hole? <laughs> <laughs> I heard it. <laughs> anyway, and he referred to this cemetery, which previously was just called Terrytown Cemetery. He referred to it as Sleepy Hollow and he has this poetic, like, because if I when when if I should ever die, I would want to rest mm. in no other place than this little sleepy hollow, and so he petitioned for it to be called that, uh, way before he wrote 
Sleepy Hollow? Sleepy Hollow. Oh, it's good to But then in Sleepy Hollow, he referred to Sleepy Hollow, this town. He referred to Ichabod Crane, who's a real colonel back in the day. That's awesome. And all these little things he pulled into that story. And so posthumously, they changed the name of Terrytown Cemetery to Sleepy Hollow Cemetery. That's fun. In his honor. But that cemetery is connected to the church and 39, I can't remember how many acres, a ridiculous amount of land. Some of the Rockefellers are... Uh, what are buried there hmm. and it's like there's a lot of to do's buried in sleepy hollow cemetery new york uh, that's a fun place to get but i just thought buried, it was so I interesting guess. that he wrote headless horseman refers to sleepy hollow and in his mind he was just reflecting on this beautifully landscaped cemetery in Terrytown, which is now called that because of him that's very cool yeah that it's a fun story that the and that tim burton johnny depp version is really fun his, in a in a twisted sort in of a way, terrifying way, in a Tim Burtony sort of yeah fashion. Yeah, I was telling we were, we were saying whether it was last week or the couple of weeks back about the chicken head cut off scenario, right? And the was I telling you along with it that the chicken coop, as far so as parents farm Alberta, there's like slim to nothing to do, pick rocks out of a field, okay. uh, this, this sort of thing. But they had a chicken coop, and the entrance to the chicken coop that went in, in between the coop and like the the part where you like they slowly oh, yeah. stepped and laid guillotine like was yeah it was a guillotine thing on a string, and so like for hours we just sit there and wait for a chicken to come through just so I could drop the the just door so on getting it. Getting three stooges in, <laughs> so it makes no sense. No like, one not even harming them really, right? No, it's just, just like, a, a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> wait for like thirty more minutes <laughs> holding the string. Oh, come on, <laughs> yeah, chickens are like, that guy's stupid. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's funny. Well, there you go. Lose your head. Don't lose your head. So don't lose your head. The uh, as far as uh, where this thing actually uh, come came from, it, Cro- it, cross your fingers. Pretty, it's got some pretty interesting stuff here. Bear with me. Cross your fingers. I'm going to give a countdown to try and get my cue. Three, two, one. I said some words. Where they so go? Good. Nailed it. Where they go? No one can know. I turned around and looked behind. Those words came from another mind. Finally, we get one cue to work on time. All right. Well, um, as you probably discovered, there is not much to the origins. So I've got it. Okay. Back to your perfectly sculpted cranium. Mine. Yes. It's, okay. it's the thing of beauty. You should have little rabbits tattooed all over yourself. All right. So from a distance, they would look like hairs. <laughs> There was something there. I just needed time to, to, to develop. Is that what you were trying to say earlier? <laughs> just, I it, cut you off? It took me half an hour to get to it. <laughs> Good to the last draw. That was in the moment. Yeah, I know. You're way better. <laughs> Mine's like... Continue. Where does this thing actually come from? Well, first of all, going back to um, <clears throat> losing your head. Well, no, we'll come around to it. Okay, so... Before we get into the origins, I discovered that it's actually used in three different ways that I could could okay. discover. Um, f- figuratively, or actually, I guess four if we count literally, like one could actually lose their head. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you end up going down the rabbit trail of actual beheadings at all when you're looking the stuff up? So no. there's famous ones like no, I Marie got- Antoinette and... No, just that it was, it's, it's always, it's guillotine. So, so the guillotine. Mary of Scots. Queen Mary. Bloody Mary. Mm-hmm. Um, so funny, not funny. It's a beheading of a queen. But one of the interesting side stories that is documented a lot was she gets executed. Apparently she does it quite, uh, like doesn't put up a fight, goes up there quite elegantly, gets beheaded. And the executioner reaches down to grab her by the hair and lift her up high to discover she's wearing a wig and the head rolls away and he's just holding this handful of red hair and then they move her body he's he like went home that night he's like this gives me such nightmares <laughs> her head actually rolled away her then hair was in my hand they move her and she had her puppy with her under her dress so her puppy covered in her blood comes running out from under her dress that's weird. like all sorts of terrible things after she's beheaded Head rolls away. Puppy comes out covered in blood. What just happened? <laughs> She's like a, oh. a nesting doll of weird. Okay. Anyway, so literally, it's a beheading. Figuratively, except still kind of used in the same way. It uh, it is also like 
to be killed in a gruesome way, but it could also be more of a threat and figurative. It might never happen. So you mentioned uh, Queen of Hearts. Listen to this. If I lose my temper, you lose your head. Right? Disney's Alice in, Alice in Wonderland. So that's figuratively. And then two idiomatic ways. Uh, one, which is the way it's most often used to behave irrationally or to lose your self-control in like, a you know, you're distressed, you're, you're out of your mind. You lose yourself in the moment. <laughs> yes, that. You want it. You never let it go. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> one shot. Do not miss this chance. Opportunity knocks. <laughs> Once in a lifetime. Yo. <laughs> Okay, so that's how we use it, such as this clip. Let me in, I'm starving. Now don't get overexcited. Don't lose your head, Augustus. We will- Augustus. Augustus. That must be Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It is. Gene it's Wilder. A, it's a Tim Burton theme. Is it Gene Wilder or Gene Wild? I think it's with an R. It's Wilder, right? It's with an R? R. <laughs> Gene Wilder. Wilder. Uh, but this one... Uh, also idiomatic. I, I did not know. I'm like, there's no examples of this. But uh, still out of your mind. Okay. You lose your head. You're <clears throat> acting irrationally. But because specifically because you're in love. Did you come across that? To so, lose your head when in love? Yeah. So hmm. older than the way we use it, it seemed to have no. been referenced to being in love. So here's a quote from The Crevice by William John Burns uh, and Isabel Ostrander. Let them once lose their heads over a man, and they upset all one's plans. So specifically about being in love, and even more so, I'm full of clips today. This is Bambi. So if you remember Bambi, the owl, is it's springtime, is frustrated because love is in the air. This is him dis- describing being Twitter-pated. Here it is. And you completely lose your head. Uh, it took us a while to get there. So anything that, describing falling in love, but so it's stuff all, that gets you out of your mind, or is it just love? But well, so both sub subcategory. I think it started with being in love. You lose your head because you're in love. Your head is in the clouds. All those sorts of things. But uh, then it just got ended up getting used as anytime you're out of your mind. And then the last one, which I couldn't find a quote, couldn't find a clip, but it's listed in the dictionary type versions of describing okay. this phrase was uh, to be dismissed from a job. Hmm. I lost my head. Well, so you got fired? In, in, in these, but I couldn't think of how that one works. It's funny that you often will often refer to our emotional center as our heart mm-hmm. and our reasoning center as our head. Right. So instead of losing your emotional, we don't lose your heart over it as opposed to lose your head over it. Hmm. Yeah. That's really... Uh, Does that have to do with the job thing? No, but just the whole losing your head is, like, in my mind, uh, uh, like, related to, like, you know, like, actually your mind. Like, not not heart-related issues. Right. Like, love and don't don't lose your head. Right. Yeah. But think, I can see Think that. straight. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it didn't say um, to be out of control because you've lost... Like, the first two were... You you lose self control because you're stressed, hmm. or you lose self control because you're in love. But the last one was to be dismissed from a job, not that you've lost control. You haven't lost self control. You've just been dismissed from your job. You lost your head. Hmm. You lost your paycheck. It's more like that. Hmm. But I couldn't find any references. It was listed in multiple places, just not, with I've no examples. That. I know. Is it like? Because have you ever heard that thing where they? sneak words into dictionaries and stuff to make them know to make you know that they're from their dictionary yeah i have heard that you think this is one of them i don't know it just doesn't make sense except it was in multiple sources oh well there you go unless only they know they're like "Hmm, that place is using it too maybe just i've never heard it i would do that sounds like a lot of effort there's apparently there's some places on the map like that on certain maps people entered their own little town that don't exist that'd be fun just so it ends up on the map and then you see other maps copy your map and you're like that place doesn't exist. Suckers. <laughs> so, yeah, those were the different ways of using it. And uh, the 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 truth is, oh, oh, one thing we know for sure that it was in use figuratively or as an idiom, whatever, uh, in the mid to late 19th century, 
Frederick Nietzsche said, one ought to hold on to one's heart. Here you go. For if one lets go, he soon loses control of the head too. So is your heart in control of your head? Well, if you lose your emotions, lose control of your emotions, then your mind goes with it. That makes sense. Yeah. So no one knows where this started as an idiom. Uh, best guess, if, if people had to choose one place, uh, they figure it comes from the days when beheading was actually a common form of punishment. Like if you if you outburst too much, you're going to get the guillotine. Yeah. The guillotine. Oh, is it? I think so. Hmm. That sounds very French. Guillotine. Oh, oh. Like Guy Lafleur. Right. 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 Just... Guillotine. <laughs> that would be a terrible name. <laughs> Guillotine. <laughs> Guillotine. <laughs> well, it's it's um I, I was thinking it more in the um like it's, have you ever pushed someone's button to the point where they lost their mind, lose your head? I had siblings. I had sis, younger sisters. Definitely pushed them till they cracked for sure. I remember pushing my one sister, not physically pushing her, but just. You're not a monster. Whatever, Just psychologically. Whatever, poking, pushing her buttons until she was crying, screaming, and beating me with her tennis racket. But I'm laughing so hard, I'm crumpled on the stairs just getting beat because <laughs> she had lost her head. She was going. But I was laughing as much as it hurt. I was Martina Navratilova all bruised, over. but I, I won. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I, she snapped. When someone resorts to physical violence, you yeah. know you've won the psychological yeah. game. <laughs> That's fair enough. So don't lose your mind when someone it pushes you to the point of torment, and it is, it's, it's a brain game. Right. Right. Don't lose your mind. You're a pretty self-control guy when it comes to arguing and different uh, difference of opinions. Yeah, I'm quite content to concede a particular fight just to vindictively get you back later. Mm-hmm. See, I'm quite play the long okay game. with knowing you're wrong and not trying to prove that I'm right. Hmm. Like, you could argue your point and I go, all right. Knowing you're an idiot, you'll figure it out later. I don't need to argue with you. It'll be like assuming you've already found the things that I've put in your new office. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're kind of heading into the tail stretch of things. We should wrap this up with some Riddlinks. Well, Riddlink is a game that you and I especially like to play. We've been playing it for years. It's a two-part trivia-based question that requires a two-part but overlapping answer. So, for example, last week's idiom was more than you can shake a stick at. I had a good time. Make sure you go back and listen to that one. I, I promise you at 1 minute 15 seconds, you will laugh. Go oh. listen to it. Uh-oh. Uh, not you. You were with me. Okay. We recorded it together. Do you remember? <laughs> I'm just I'm starting to wonder. <laughs> One minute, 15. Uh, but anyway, our riddle link from that episode was the calories of this green drink from Ronald McDonald is more than you can count. Shamrock shake a stick at. That's it. So we got shamrock shake and shake a stick at. That's how the game is played. I've got a couple of, of prep for you. They're a little trickier today. Now that Okay. I, yeah, this is going to stretch, uh, but better for our illegitimate children. I'll say them slowly. That'll help. Okay. There's there's some this is tricky. Okay, I'll I'll give you the easier of the the tricky. The easier of the tricky. They went absolutely crazy for the shape of you. For the shape of you. Isn't that Ed Sheeran? So um lost your Lost your head, Sheeran. Oh my goodness! I, for, for some reason, I was I was stuck on lost your mind. Lose your head, Sheeran. Yeah, lose your head, Sheeran. Don't lose your head, Sheeran. Oh, that wasn't so bad. Okay, it's good. I wasn't sure if you knew the song or not. Okay, I, I got one. I think it's pretty easy. Okay. Uh, Thank to, you. To let go of control and strike with your cranium. <laughs> lose your headbutt. Yep, <laughs> that's it. Okay. All right. This is this is tricky here. It's got some random stuff in it. Maybe you'll be able to put it together. Oh, man. Isaac Tigret. <laughs> what? Exactly. And Dan Aykroyd. Okay. Their chain restaurant makes me go insane. Chain restaurant makes me... Is it... Blues your head? Very close. Their restaurant, once you get the first part. Blues Brothers. Mm -hmm. House of Blues? House of Blues, your head. There it is. Oh. They're the founders of the House of Blues. Awesome. Yeah. House of Blues, your head. House of Blues, your head. 
Isaac. So who's he? Is he in the movies? No, he uh, is is part of, uh, to my understanding, the um, what's the Hollywood movie chain? The Planet, one, Planet Hollywood. I think he's in the Planet Hollywood. The restaurant. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if he's. And a, then did House of Blues with Dan Aykroyd. Yeah. Oh, yeah. is he involved in Bubba Gump too? I don't know about that. But huh. Yeah. Yeah, I thought the Dan Aykroyd aspect would at least get you into the And I just recently brother. learned, I had no idea, Michael Keaton started McDonald's. <laughs> I saw the movie. <laughs> it's true. Okay, I got one more, but right. why don't we leave this one for all our illegitimate children to answer out there. Tell them how they can get a hold you of us and participate. You can find us at, on Instagram at the.village.idiom or email the village idiom podcast at gmail.com or whether it's Facebook, YouTube, or Twitter at three minutes gone. All right, here is your riddle link. <laughs> Flies in the buttermilk, shoe fly shoe, and act like you're out of your mind. Do you feel, feel the cadence there? Say that again. Flies in the buttermilk, shoe fly shoe, and act like you're out of your mind. Wow, a melodic finisher. Closing maneuver, finish him. <laughs> Finish him. Oh, I lost my accent. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. It was fun putting uh, these uh, voice samples together. Uh, we hope you en- you enjoyed it, too. Uh, good. I'm Skinny. I am Jurassic Hickabog Crane Mark. And these are the Village Idioms. <laughs>